there was so much to talk about last week. I feel like we could probably here for the first few minutes uh, revisit some of those things. I have not personally had access to any of the new features at all. Has anybody here? No. Nope. I don't, but I just saw someone who did who was giving me some insight. He has the cover story. Um, Ooh, cool. And so it appears that the uh, the whole cover story thing is like featured and that if you don't got it, you can't see it. Yeah, I have Oh, that. interesting. That makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. And could you unpack that a little bit for everyone here who's not familiar with that? Sure. The cover story is the new video that will play in your profile photo. Um, we do know you have to access it on the mobile app only. It's oh, not really? a desktop feature from what he said. Um, he recorded his directly. He said it does look like you can upload. So for those we were talking about possibly editing and taking greater advantage, he said it mm -hmm. looked like you'd be able to, to upload it um if you if you get to that point um but other than that everything looked the same that it had the orange circle around it okay um, but again like i can't go and see it on his profile on his profile because i don't have it myself yet oh. and Did you i was try at it? the tail end of the featured section uh rollout so i'm yeah I'll be at you're, the in the the you're in the back of the bus you're in the back of the bus did you crystal so did you try viewing that individual's profile yep. on mobile as well um, actually, you know what? I did not. Oh, yeah. Let's see if yeah. that does it. I, I, I tried it. Somebody I know has got it. Or well, they've said they've done a post about it, but I can't see it on mobile yeah. or desktop. No, Nigel? Are you talking about Nigel? You... Nigel Cliff. Yep. Yeah. Yes. He's the yeah. one that I'm talking about, too. Um, yeah. In a little Do I need to know this Nigel Cliff? He's a pretty cool guy cool. to know. Is he really? Yeah. And he's uh, he's based down the road from me. No. Why don't yeah. you put his, profile, put his profile link in the chat? I'll, I'll, I'll creep on his profile a little bit and see what he's got going on. <laughs> okay, so it, it could be possible that you, you just can't see the that feature until you have it as well, which right. we have seen in the that's past. Right, yeah, yeah. Yep. okay. Well, that's good to know. Okay, well, I'm going to check out Noi, just Profoil. <laughs> so there was that. Uh, has anybody seen the LinkedIn Live broadcast of the banner? Uh, Mary last week, Mary Brandt said that she saw it on one person's, but I didn't get the name of the individual. Anybody I see that? No. That's cool. Good to know. There he is, Nigel Cliff. Okay. All right. John just joined us. John, we're, we're recapping last week's uh, new features. So the video cover stories no one has access to yet. The LinkedIn Live broadcasting to the banner no one has seen or had access to. Does anyone here have LinkedIn Live? Oh my gosh. I, I no, haven't even applied for it. No. I applied for it again this yeah. week and it got rejected. I'll, I'll read my rejection letter because they say it's one of these three reasons. And so I don't know if they're just giving me the runaround because you're not supposed to talk about LinkedIn on LinkedIn Live or what, but I, I'll tell you some thoughts here. All right, cool. Uh, service pages, has anybody had access to or seen the standalone service pages? Yeah, me either. Okay. We're just so early. I've seen, I've seen them. No, you haven't. Uh, yeah. I, <laughs> let's see. Who is it? Somebody had it just the other day. Um, I'll have to pull it up while we talk and see if I can get it. Just do it. Get it because you're wearing a Nike shirt. So you were able to see it even <laughs> though you didn't have it yourself? No, I saw it on another guy's profile. Okay. Nice. Oh, Monty, if you could find that and drop the individual's profile in the chat, that would be so groovy. If not, totally cool. I will. Yeah, awesome. I'll search for it here while we uh, chat. Okay, cool. Cool. Have you learned anything new since the last two times we talked about the invite limits? Uh, Judy, you haven't been here for those conversations. So kind of just really quick recap. Uh, Seems like between 100 and 300 weekly invites doesn't matter on accept. Have not seen a correlation between acceptance rates mattering and if pending invites are accepted, you can't send more. It's a firm weekly cap. Uh, so Judy, every I think everyone else here was in the previous conversation. Actually, Monty, were you here that first time? Yeah, you were. I right? was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Judy, have you seen anything on your end in the UK? No, I'm not aware of any changes to invitations at all. Not seen are, that at all. Well, we have. There, there's a, it started, someone messaged me about it like 
two or three weeks ago. Mike brought it up a few weeks before, a few weeks ago. He's like, hey, have you seen this happening? And I was like, no. And then I dug in a little bit and I was like, actually, yeah, we have, we work with a few people where they're hitting one, 100. We don't do, like, we only do like 30 invites a day. So we don't go much over 100. But there were a few accounts where they were hitting a cap at 100 firm. It was just straight 100 firm. And those accounts, uh, they're pretty active across the board with content, uh, great acceptance rates, good reply rates. I, 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 we couldn't find any correlation. So we weren't sure if it was uh, something that they were testing before they figured out a firm number or if it was what the deal was. And they were all paid accounts too. Wow. Yeah. So you haven't seen that at all. Huh? But no, a max of 100 a week. That's not money at all, is it? No, and actually, is it because we just, of the the automation tools and things. I, I, I would suspect that's part of it. It's got to be. It's got to be. I will so, say my client reached out to Sales Nav Help because she was livid about this. Mm -hmm. um, and the one interesting thing that she got out of there, I kind of coached her on what to say to not kind of give up that we have this insight, you know, knowledge into this beta test, um, was that they claimed that the invitations to connect are a feature of free LinkedIn. And so it is not something you are paying for with Sales Navigator. So it doesn't matter if they limit them or not if you're on Sales Navigator. Yeah, sure. So Be Because sales doesn't imply meeting new people. Right. <laughs> right. Well, but no, what they want to push, what they want to push is their in-mail. They want to say, you, you know, sales navigators for in mail you have an unlimited as long as people are replying to it yeah it's not really about connecting so that's how they get that workaround but it's all bs they you know everybody uses sales navigator to connect with people yeah could i ask a question about that creator mode though because they want mm -hmm. people to follow don't they you've got to have the settings so that you have followers rather than the connect sorry follow button rather than the connect button do you think it's all down to the fact that you actually, they want people to follow more than connect? Maybe, I think when you turn on creator mode, it automatically switches connect to follow. So you don't have to toggle it in your account settings is what I understand from the documentation. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I think just the idea that if you're a creator and you produce content, you're probably more interested in growing your following than connections, just a guess. Even though when you connect, you follow, but it's but, like- yeah. Sometimes creators, they don't want to be besties with all of their followers, you know, because people get weird. I don't Julie, know. I, cha I challenge that a bit. Today. I would challenge that a bit. I think people still want to build up their connections um, yeah, instead, of, instead of followers. I'd rather totally rather have connections than followers. Yeah, I would. If you're doing sales, if, you know, if you're Gary Vee. I, I think in general, I think in general, people feel that way, not just sales. I think, I think in general. You know, you're more important. The more connections you have, the more important you are, the more you can do, the more, more, more followers is relatively limited with what powers you get from that. It's just my opinion. And, uh, my, yeah. My... yeah, no, it's, it's great insight, Mike. I've set mine to follow because <clears throat> I want to be very specific about who I connect with. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to connect with just anybody and everybody all the time. Anybody can follow me any, all they want. But I want to you don't have to. You don't have to accept the invitation, Monty. I'm, I only accept maybe one third of the invitations that come into me, but I, it's my choice. Right. I don't have to accept the invitation, but it's much easier and cleaner in my mind. If you just want to follow me, go ahead. I can still reject the connection, but me rejecting it on a connection is different from just saying follow. I find I don't get as many bots with the, I've been using the follow button too, mostly to calm mm -hmm. the bots down. And if someone follows me, who's in my target market, I'll reach out and connect to them. They'll usually still follow me or they'll send right. um, the, I have the free in mails to me to message me first. So I don't think it's really affected me connecting to the people I want to connect by having the follow button. It's to me, it, it's, it's calmed most of the bots. Some of them get around it, but um, and, and I love with the emoji when I get a, an invite that's just to my emoji. It's, it's like <laughs> definitely a bot. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I have a question for Monty. If, it, if follow is the option, is it okay to stalk you? Only if you do it incognito. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just wanted to add to that is that um, 
I'm going to say, and maybe it's to Mike's thing, uh, probably about 85%, maybe 80% of the invites I get are crap. And they're not my target market. And they're generally uh, pitch slapping about to happen. And, um, you know, one of the things I've done, like Crystal, you have the emoji, I have the lowercase j, so I can tell right away they're scraping. Um, but I find my strategy is keep it as follow. And then I reach out to people if I see that they've posted something interesting or if they engage with my content or, or if they decide to follow me. Um, and I feel like an outbound strategy for connections is a much more curated um, form, at least for me as a LinkedIn strategist. Now for my clients, it's different because we're targeting a certain title and a certain vertical. And so we're, we're looking to, we're doing the outbound to them, which is inbound, I guess. Um, and in that respect, you know, when you're averaging a 30% connection rate, um, you know, that it's a, that's a different strategy. So I think the important thing is with your connections is to have a strategy as to how you want to build your network and how you want to use it. And, uh, and if all else fails, just stalk them like I do with Monty. <laughs> hey, this is, this is a, Monty is totally worth stalking. Here, here, this is a really good bunny trail. Let me ask you all a question I've never thought about before. Does anyone know here if there is... Like, you know, when you connect with someone, you follow them automatically, or you can just straight up follow them. Does anyone know here with like definitive, not, not just a guess, does anyone know definitively here, if you are both connected and following someone, does that make your content more preferred in the newsfeed versus just following? No, know? it's no? the relevancy factor, which has to do with, you know, if you go back to the SSI score, it has to do with your messaging. It has to do with if you're engaging with their content. So I think if you look at those factors, and, and I'm just saying that because it's, and plus how you have your feed set. Do you have it set as top, which is what LinkedIn thinks, or do you have it set as recent? So, you know, there, there's all those variables in there, but I think that if, you, if you're engaged, like when I start engaging with people, all of a sudden their stuff starts showing up again in my feed. But like, if I'm not engaging with them, it's not showing up, you know, or they're so not this is the, the theory that or at least from what I've seen is that I think if you just follow the person, you're going to be more likely to see their content because you're saying I want to follow them to see their content. When you connect with someone while they become a follower, I've noticed LinkedIn will show you that person's content if they're sharing content almost right away in your newsfeed and they're going to use whether or not you engage with their content as a factor in determining do we continue to show them um, that person's content. If they don't engage with it, then they kind of dis. I've seen they disappear from my newsfeed. Um, if it's if it's a connection, if I don't engage with it, whereas if I do engage with it, then I start to get more and more of that person. So I think that while the follow is automatic, I think if you just follow, you're going to be more likely to get that person's content because you're saying I want to see that content, whereas the connection's not necessarily saying I want to see that content. Yeah, that makes sense. Definitely. Yes, Do you think LinkedIn has that kind of logic built in or, or, or I, I mean, mean, do you think they're thinking it through that much? Well, have you guys, I just noticed, I don't know if this is brand new, but in the drop downs on the posts, you can give specific feedback on why you don't want to see a certain post now, which I don't recall seeing that before. I think that's fairly new or I've just been in a yeah. hole somewhere. So I think they are trying to judge a bit more on whether or not you want to see um, you know, what types of content you want to see and why you don't want to see a particular type of content when you don't want to see it. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can, you know, sometimes when I'm bored or I'm multitasking something, I'll go through my feed and unfollow and follow and follow anyone that is like, I don't know how I wound up following them, um, you know, or, or hit those three dots. I think the thing is that there's always treasures in those three dots. And if you see those three dots, it's like, <gasps> Ooh, yeah. Me. You know, so yeah. Yeah, but I've seen the ability to hide sound. and mute, but I haven't seen that with the with the options to say, I don't like the topic, I don't like this person, I'm seeing too much of this person. You know, so that level is actually interesting because people have been saying they want that and it looks yeah. like they quietly gave it to us without telling us it's there. Yeah. That comes from Facebook. I mean, in Facebook, the that that features ripped right out of there. And I, I, I think it's great here for, yeah. for I mean, so, some folks have a lot more time to look at content and all that kind of stuff. I, and other folks don't. Um, 
you know, I, I, I don't spend so much time analyzing this post and why this and stuff. I mean, gosh, with how, where's the time for that? Um, yes. I, I guess, I guess some, some, some folks have, cause you, maybe you focus more on that. Um, yeah. but I, I sure don't have that kind of time. Well, I get a lot of feedback from people saying they don't want to spend time on LinkedIn because the content in their newsfeed is irrelevant to them, even though it's supposed to be. Oh, relevant. yeah. It's definitely and, LinkedIn's best interest to clean and it up. And so that's why I spend a lot of time trying to pay attention to that, to be able to educate them on how they can train their own algorithm so that they can start to see the content they want to see. And that would encourage them to be more active on LinkedIn than they have been. Yeah. And I think it all goes back to... First thing I ask is, why do you want to be on LinkedIn? Is it to build a network? Is it to become you know, more visible? Is it to use it for research? You know, what is your purpose? And then formulate a strategy that aligns with that. So like Mike is saying, you know, the content part isn't as important to him as maybe building, and I'm speaking for you, Mike, is building a very, very strong network. Mike is really good with dialing into that exact you know, network um, and getting to the yes. Whereas, you know, there might be other people uh, that, you know, it's the content, they really want to be thought of as, you know, that thought leader or that expert uh, in their niche. So I think starting with the strategy, and then from there, it's going to be a different path you're going to take. Um, and if you don't have a strategy, then it's a mishmash, and then you're going to get frustrated with LinkedIn and think that it doesn't work. Right? I'm dealing with business owners, and they're not looking, they're not on LinkedIn looking looking for something to do they're, they're right. running they're running their business they're running they're running sales operations you know if, if they get caught looking at, at at articles and another one i like that and sharing it they could lose their job if you're if you work for sprint and you're doing that kind of stuff you're out the door if you're piddling around reading content and unless it's from a specific customer you're assigned to that's yeah. not considered work in a lot of in a lot of environments you yeah. know, what we, you know what we should do is we should have someone who is an expert at curating corporate content share best practices. I wonder if that would be somebody huh. from. Um, huh. Should we just should we just do it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, who would that be? Would it be like someone mm. from HubSpot or? Not something? me. It's not me. Who's doing it? I don't know. Somebody with somebody with this red swoosh on their shirt. Oh, yeah, yeah. the guy I'm stalking him. Yeah, he's got great barbecue. Um, <laughs> come on, Monty, what? just do it. Plus, Monty, about, mother, Monty. Uh, hey, let, let's put a little, let's put a peer pressure bug in Monty's ear. Monty, I feel like the world needs some clarity on how to do content on LinkedIn. Maybe can I, may can I share my screen? Yes. Yeah. You, does everyone hey, know, by the way, that Monty is a published author of a book on LinkedIn? Do you all know that? No, he's kind of a big, I had to give him, I had to give Monty $20 to be here today. <laughs> yeah, that'll be the day. <laughs> so this is um, one of my clients, corporate clients. And this is why you push corporate content. 129,000 impressions in the last 30 days. Wow, look at that. Ooh. And this is why you do it. And this so is it's why visibility. It. It's visibility here. Click on the show stats. Let's look at the engagement. That's why you do it. So yeah, um, corporate content. The key to corporate content, it has to be engageable as though you're writing it like a person, an individual. You have to get engagement to it. And you have to have employees um, con like, comment, and share it out. Yeah. If you do that, that's the that's the magic trick to corporate content. And um, they, there's not a company in the world, um, small to medium sized company, that can match the analytics of what you can produce with LinkedIn. So I have 45, you know, button clicks to their website that I know that is their absolute direct target market. So then we can tell them exactly what they need to do on their website to convert that. Um, we can tell pretty much exactly who the 398 unique visitors are. Mm -hmm. From the insights tag. Are using mm -hmm. the insight tag, yeah. Yep. 
we Monty, can build Monty, do you find do you find do you find that it's marketing people out there, um, not not customers and owners and decision makers, but other marketing people that are liking, commenting, and sharing because they're the ones looking at feeds and posting stuff themselves, and they comment on other stuff. Do, mm. do, do the do, do the customers themselves work with this? Uh, in my world, they 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 have very little time for that. They're they're not curating people's stuff in the the world of my my clients. <laughs> Well, my, you know, I create the content for this company. You know, the, the CEO is not creating the content. I create the thought leadership, the brand imaging, everything else for this company. So no, I'm in, in your world to try and get the CEOs, the C-levels, you know, to go out and create content and everything else, that's pointless. But I just, no, I just mean to look at it, to, to like, comment, and share it, even notice it's there. I'm not oh, talking yeah, about yeah, making it. Yes, so you you do have to um, have leadership on board to be able to make this work. Um, it's a team effort. The only, re the only way that you can do that, though, um, Mike, is to be able to show them analytics like this. Okay, so if I can if I can show you the result of it and I can show you why to do it, then yeah, they'll do it. But but you know what though? But you guys have two different objectives. Mike, yours is in sales sales development, and that's the end game. Whereas Monty, you're more into you're getting that visibility and you're reaching that target audience and you're you're using the ambassadorship of the employees. So those are two different strategies. Well, there's there's two different strategies, but the same destination. I would also say, Judy, that they go hand in hand. Okay. Yeah. Because I work with um, eight salespeople in this company. And in order to build up the trust, expertise, and authority for those each, those individual salespeople, we use this marketing. So they take this, they make it their own post. I work with them to show them how to do that. And it makes the sales process so much more streamlined and easier for them when they've created their own thought leadership because people do business with people. They don't do business with brands. So the more that I can use the marketing on this side to enable the sales on this other side with LinkedIn, absolutely. And, and when you get the results of that, not only from a marketing perspective and building up the brand, it's a rising tide floats all boats scenario, right? For you, sure. So it's your priming it. It's like anything else. If you have a primer, it, you know, then it's yes. you're preparing it that way. And uh, if there's an analogy, because somebody's painting my deck right now, so he's put the primer down. Well, the stats don't lie, Monty. You showed real shit there. So yeah. <laughs> that was that was real. That was real real deal. I mean, I, I right. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you on it. I well, would, you know, would, would 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 love to have my sales managers that I target and the business owners that I target actually reading anything on LinkedIn. I just don't. Don't, don't see them spending time doing that. Uh, just getting into well, logging in at all. Sometimes your process, and honestly, the, um, what you're trying to get them to do is to enable the relationship more, right? Sales so enablement. I'm not asking the salespeople to go out and spend two hours a day reading content on LinkedIn. That's, that's not happening. I'm, I'm asking them to um, take a post. I'll tell them how to create it engageable for themselves by sharing it, how to do that, <clears throat> so that when they are engaging in the conversations that they're trying to establish rapport with and trying to get into a sales conversation, they have a foundation, right? Otherwise, it's just a cold pitch. I mean, you're just trying to, otherwise, you're just trying to build relationships cold. That's a lot more of a challenge on LinkedIn these days because of exactly what Judy just said earlier, you know everybody's getting pitch slapped right and left it's almost become the cold calling of today right it is. they've taken the old cold calling methodologies of pre-covid and everything and they've been up dumping it all on linkedin through all the sales automation and everything else so while automation is good for us who use it well most people don't use it well and they're just they're just pitching left and right. They're ruining relationships before they even get the opportunity to make a sale. Well, that's it. Yeah, and again, it's strategy. And that I think is part of the Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross strategy. It's always be closing, always be calling, always be doing that. You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. it's a numbers game. If you need, you know, 15 conversations, you gotta send out a thousand, whatever. Um, back when I started my career, it was direct mail and it was junk mail. You got all this yep. stuff in the mail and it was like, ugh. 
you know, and now if you get something in the mail, it's like, oh, this is cool, you know. So oh, I wish I get your mail. Mine's always just bills. <laughs> well, I, you know what's funny is I just realized I want those little return address things, but I've opted out of everything, so I'm not getting those little, yeah. you know, those charity mm -hmm. things. So now I got to buy them. Um, but I, I think you know, again, it, it really. Um, the strategies can cross over from what you're saying, Monty. It's like the content is the foundation of your strategy and the rest builds upon that. Mike, yours is having a really fine tuned um, target, you know, and then producing um, your, your messages are really relevant. Your messaging is your content and it's really highly crafted to address a pain point for that prospect. So then that converts. And That's so, true. you know, I think again, it, it all strategy, how you use the content, whether it's in posts or whether it's in your messaging, you know, relevancy, um, the right target, you know, because if I'm not getting a at least a 30% conversion rate, it's, something's wrong. Either I have the wrong target, I have the wrong messaging, or, you know, there's something in my profile that's not resonating. So it's like, yeah. You know, yeah. And I, I'm not saying in any way, Mike, that your strategy is wrong by any means. I honestly don't even know what your strategy is. But <clears throat> Go ahead. SDR. The, the, the people we're trying we're trying to reach out to just are not are not reading content. They're not reading it on Facebook. They're 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 doing their job. They're not reading. They're not they're not like commenting, sharing, and stuff. They're decision making in their in their role at their job. And um, you know, so I'm, 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 I, I don't say that blanket statement. You know, there's an 80 20 rule here. Yeah, yeah. But like I said, it's all it all it, somehow these things have to align the messaging, the target, you know, and whether or not. I guess it goes back to, you know, when your solution becomes a priority to whoever it is that you're reaching out to, then you're going to get their attention. So there's some, some little bait or something that you want to, you know, kind of lure them in with, um, not to misrepresent yourself. Um, you're creating but, demand. Yeah. Well, there's there's another point, component to it here, there, here that, I, that I missed, and let me back backspace over it a little bit is that when someone does come to your profile, they get to see the way you've been sharing and your activity and stuff. And I see lots of benefit from that. But relying on that activity for them to find you when they don't know who you are and, yeah. don't, and, are, don't, and stuff is just the other side of the apple. But once they get to your profile, I love to see the stuff people like, commented, and shared. And, and that means a lot to me. So I'll back, I'll back a space over half of what I said just because of that. Yeah, awesome. You know, what I realized after visiting with Monty a couple of weeks back is like, you know, at, if your history on LinkedIn has been mostly SDR sales development rep, where you're connecting with your target audience and trying to build an authentic relationship there, everyone that's accepted the invite, you, you've already, they're already following you unless they've unfollowed, which is going to be almost no one. And so you, what you've been doing is you have been building the infrastructure for marketing. You know, it's not two separate roads. You've been building the marketing highway for content just because of all of the right followers. You probably just have not been doing any publishing. The yeah. infrastructure is there. Use it. You know, that's that was like my big light bulb moment. I was like, oh, geez, all these working with all these people and they have like thousands of people following them that are their perfect audience. Why yeah. aren't we just also doing content too? You know, like roll it in. I think moving forward, you'll, I think moving forward, we'll have to incorporate it in some way. If you're only relying on messaging, I think that your ROI, your KPIs are going to kind of go down a bit in the next few years. That, that's where I'm at. Cut that out, please, Isaac. <laughs> no way, Jude. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I might even do like a songify there. <laughs> Uh, just because you're, you're just because you're talking about uh, the the new features and not getting it, I wanted to do this really quick in case you found this this page where it says "Get Started Now," yeah, turn on career talk. mode. So no really quick, if you if you did find yourself here and didn't work, it didn't work for anyone. <laughs> just so you know, I don't think no, so. But, but what happened? Brenda has it. Uh, Brenda Miller has it, and I think she's using it. And Mark Williams has it. Those two. Okay. Cool. So yeah, if you go next, it's gonna say you're not found. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Ooh. what happens is it's it's like a, uh, it looks like a placeholder until whatever changes on the back end because it goes linkedin.com slash in slash me. Yeah. In slash me is just everybody goes here, period. That's it. So what I did is I thought, well, you know what? What if I replaced me <laughs> with my actual 
right? Maybe this is a super cool hack that I can do. And if I do this, you know what happens? Four. Boom, you're kicked oh, off. No, <laughs> no it's no. <laughs> it stays the same, right? It looks the same, but when I click next, it still goes unavailable. So, so in, yeah. What, what about this other one, Gregory Mansell? He has this other feature which I still can't activate, but he's got that video feature, the live one that you said you were turned down for. Did you see Gregory's profile? No, what's what? Gregory, Spells last name. Uh, I'm putting it in the chat here. Mans Mansell. Right here. Um, yeah. Click on that orange thing. Is the new. Um, Ooh. And then it's supposed to be a video, though. He put this video thing. So there's, and I'm not sure how to get to it. Not that. I think it only works on mobile. I tried it on mobile. I'm not seeing it. Um, you don't see it there either. So you know, and go you to Brenda. Go to Brenda Meller's uh, profile because she's got one. I'm getting these confused. I'm getting creator and um, whatever the one is with the video one confused. But um, go to Brenda, Brenda Meller. Brenda Meller, M-E-L-L. -L. Yeah, there you go. So she has creator. So let's see. Can't see her hashtags. No. So go down a little bit. Interesting. So if she has creator, then where is it? Maybe, maybe well, it's because well, my account's had, not there. If she had creator, her um, featured section would be above her about section, right? Yeah. Or is it, it another to... part of if you don't have it, you can't see it? Mm -hmm. um, could, be. could be. What about Mark Williams? Has he got it, did you say? Yeah, Mark said he has it on his podcast. So go to Mark Williams. He's okay. in the UK. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, because something's happened just in different geo markets. Uh, Mark Williams, let's see. This, yeah. this um, Mark? Th third one, I think. No. Third one, Dan. There he is, third one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He does a great podcast, by the way, where he goes over the, the features and everything. So let's see if he, if it's visible by him. Yeah, it's not, though, is it? So what does that mean? If you don't have it, you're out? You can't see it. But that's what happened when they rolled out, rolled out the featured section. You couldn't see it on other people's profiles if you didn't have it yourself. That's right. So if we don't have the ability to have creator mode on our own account, then we can't see it on other people's. If we don't have the ability to do the cover story video on our own account, we can't see it on other people's. So they're just preaching to the choir then. Oh. Exactly, I was gonna say, what's the point? <laughs> well, the point is that now we're here talking about all these people. <laughs> and, yeah, <laughs> no, and this, they got free, they got free brand awareness. Oh man. Hey, really, really quick, I could not get a gift to upload as oh, a company logo. Is that it's grandfather? His grandfather. That's what I was assuming. Yeah, I, I just wanted to check. Okay. Yeah. Boy, Maybe. I wish they wouldn't take that away because there were some really cool ones that I saw. One accounting firm had a really cool one. A couple others. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Things can get a little bit too busy, but I do think that tastefully, it's pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. Just yeah. curious. All right. Do you want to see my rejection letter for LinkedIn Live? Please. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> kind of recapping from last week, LinkedIn Live, you broadcast, now it's going to go to your profile banner, which is really nice because you can just tell people, go to my profile and watch it instead of saying, wait for the link after we start broadcasting. And then I need to get all these people the link or the notification is total pain. So I was pretty excited about that. I wanted to get in on that action. So I said, you know what? I need to apply it for LinkedIn Live again because the first time I replied, I got rejected. And surely now, like a year later, surely I get accepted, but I didn't. So here is here is the, the letter. Uh, I'll tell you this really quick in case you were wondering. Yes, I straight up just removed everything from my profile related to LinkedIn and just said, left Ooh. it as B2B sales. So I did do that. I even changed language on my website's homepage, just in case. So I feel like I covered my bases there. I don't know. We're sorry, Isaac. Thank you for applying. Unfortunately, we cannot grant you access at this time. Mm. The video broadcasting feature is only available to LinkedIn members and pages. So there's that there. Does anyone know if the delineation between individuals and pages was there before? It was. It was, okay. Maybe I should apply for live on a page. Okay. That would meet certain criteria to ensure safe, trusted environment on LinkedIn. 
obviously, obviously I'm not very safe and trustworthy. <laughs> I don't know if you know me or not. Danger. I know I'm so shady. Actually, my backup job is to sell used cars. Okay. My, why didn't my application get accepted? At the, somebody who's selling used cars is going to watch us and just hate me. I'm going to get a hate mail. Note. At the time of this submission, your application did not meet one or more of the following criteria. Number one, video, original content, and overall content creation history. I, I don't share content every day, but there's, there's, I have a lot of stuff out there. So I don't know what, I don't know if that was the one audience size or an engagement history. I, I engage with people again, could be better. People engage with my stuff could be my audience size. Is, I mean, it's less than 10,000. So I don't know if there's an entry level there. I don't know. Uh, or my member or page admin. Uh, this is if you applied for page isn't, uh, would not be in good standing. Right. So and I'm sure that my account and my page is all in good standing. So. You know what I think it is, Isaac? What? They don't want people using live to talk about LinkedIn. Oh, I know. That's why I removed everything related to LinkedIn mm -hmm. from my uh, profile. So I have a guy that did get LinkedIn live. Mm -hmm. Was it Kevin Kwok? No. Okay. He did not have a big following. I mean, he only had like 5,000 followers. What he did was he went and submitted an application every day for like 30 days. Nice. <laughs> and then he got through his working, he found a name of somebody that's in this process. And I will get the name of this person from him that he reached out to directly and said, I really want LinkedIn Live. Why are, you know, I'm getting no information why I can't have it. I'm submitting it. Can you help me get it? And she got it for him. Oh, wow. So I'll get the name of this person that he went through. And maybe all of us submitting a request every single day and then yeah. pinging this person going, hey, what gives? Yeah, that's not harassment at all. I'm sure we're that. amazing LinkedIn people. We should have it. Maybe we'll get some. Maybe we'll get some traction. Yeah, that could be cool. Yeah. Okay, so Kevin Kwok, do you know him, Monty? He's in town. Yeah. Here. Yep. Okay, so he he received LinkedIn LinkedIn Live not long after it's he got started. It early. Yeah, he got it really early, and then he got a notification. Somebody, I don't know if somebody saw it or what the deal was, but somebody reported it or whatever. And LinkedIn said, "Hey." We see you're talking about LinkedIn on LinkedIn Live. You don't oh. do that anymore. And so he was like, geez, gatekeeper. Censorship. Who sick the dogs <laughs> on me? Yeah. But there's so Brenda, many people doing it. Talking about like Brenda LinkedIn. Miller and Beth Granger do lives about I know. LinkedIn. Maybe they're yeah. loosening the grip on that. I don't know. They I had mean, it for a while, though. They yeah. had it back when we didn't think LinkedIn people could get it. Yeah. I think they've changed it because the, the whole application has changed. I've got the same as you, Isaac, because I keep applying for it. And this is the first time they've actually sent me a message back, the same one as you. And um, I thought that they'd taken that option out where they said in about, you, they, you had all these notes, didn't you? And it said, you must not use it to, to talk about LinkedIn. And I thought that had gone. And I thought that's why people who are more LinkedIn trainers are getting it. Because I've seen a lot, a lot of people talk about LinkedIn. But I also read something by Andy Foote that said that you should just keep, if you get that message, just re keep reopening the case and applying it again. So maybe that's the same as what Monty was saying. Just keep applying, applying, applying. Please don't talk about how to use LinkedIn on LinkedIn. <laughs> 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 I get it. I get it. Oh, but but at the same time, like really. Yeah. Okay. It's still there. Void. Yeah. Please don't talk about it. If they did a good enough job of teaching people and helping them understand how to use LinkedIn, then we wouldn't be in business and they wouldn't need us. No. Whoa. That definitely Her. should be, that was a, that was, well, that was a very true comment. That was a very true comment. <laughs> Absolutely. If you, um, I think another thing that factors in too, is if you're producing video, um, actual video content on your feed. So if part of your strategy is to produce videos and stuff out there, I think you're more likely to get it. Oh, yeah. So maybe if you don't, incorporate it for a few weeks and then submit it, see what happens. Has anyone been attending these lives? I mean, I 
I haven't seen one in a long time. I, I get these notifications like it's happening right now. I'm in the middle. I of turned something. mine no. off because it was bombarding my notifications. They all suck. Yeah. So that's uh, the that's I'd the say... that's the secret about them. But and the only reason that people do them, from what I've seen, um, even Cher Jones, you know, who she was in broadcasting and probably does the best job of anybody that I've seen on the platform. Who is it? Cher Jones. Oh yeah, Cher Jones. Yeah. yeah. Um, she even has abysmal, you know, uh, when it's live, nobody shows up. She does it entirely for the post engagement. Yeah. So after it's there, it sits there kind of like a video. But in my mind, I mean, there's that. That's a lot of work for not a lot of return. Yeah, I'll what say about, what's been uh, interesting, Jeffrey Gitomer Jeff, has been yeah. streaming daily since the beginning of the pandemic. He, he thought it would only be a short term thing. And now he's over 365 days, but he does a one hour live every, every single day. day, even on the weekends straight. Oh, that's Do a you lot. know how that has impacted his his following and brand but he's already kind of got a big following he's the guy that does the little red yes. the little black he was red. huge as heck already yeah, yeah. all right he, he's uh you know he i guess keenan would be maybe on a you know you know I said, the one person i follow who does it weekly and i was a guest on it and he doesn't i was the first person he ever had talked about linkedin but phil gerbishak Oh yeah, Phil's sure. great. Yeah, yeah, Phil's awesome. I found I've I've jumped in and listened to some of his. He has some interesting people and in, in topics on there. But what he does too is then he converts that into his podcast as well. So he does a double duty. Yeah. yeah, that's that's the way to go. Just one other question: Has anyone gotten newsletter yet? Remember the nope. thing like two years ago? <laughs> I want it, <laughs> and I, and I've tried I've tried putting in tickets, complaining that I want it, and they try to tell me how to do it as if I've got it. <laughs> What's well, by like, invite? That's the problem. I would do that if I could. <laughs> I'm yeah. pretty sure it's by invite only, right? That's no, how it, it has, wasn't. You know? No, I've actually got the LinkedIn newsletter. <gasps> Shut What's up. up? <laughs> you want to show the world what it's like because it's so mysterious or uh, if you don't want to? It, it's hilarious because I'm probably the worst person <laughs> writing articles. Oh my gosh. Wow. How did you get it? I don't know. It just turned up. It's a it creative newsletter. Up. I started to write an article and it said, got a newsletter um, and it was there. Um, Can you tell us what it looks like? Um, I'm just going to um, just open it Oops. up. Yeah, it's, you, like, it's just a button right next to the publish. When you open the write an article, it's supposed to be a button that pops up on the top toolbar. Yeah, it says, was just on the top, on the on the navigation bar at the top. Yeah. Judy, no pressure at all. If you wanted to share your screen, yeah, you no, can. It's, <laughs> you just can. going to go to it. So I'll go to my newsletter and show you. Uh, let's go share screen. Can you see that? Got it. So, oh, that's so. I've had it. Um, oh, it's great because you get all these subscribers, and um, and you can see I've published three articles in the time that I've had it, which is uh, it's uh, oh, well seven months ago. So, um, so when you go, to I'm home, not prolific at all. So we're on it. I'm on it really. Go to your home button. I'm just curious what it looks like if you go to home. Um, on the home page, you are on the home page right now. Yeah, that that's this is it. This is what it. That's the home page of that. So that's of the, the link to the newsletter. The newsletter. So Got what's it. your regular home page look like? So if you go to your uh, regular, the, you can't. Um, so on the regular home page. Can I ask you, what, Judy? Before you leave that tab, can I ask you a question? Yes. Is your LinkedIn profile URL the dash LinkedIn lady with the numerical behind it? Um, th 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 no, it's my name. The okay. URL is Judith Parsons. Okay. Um, but I know where you're coming from because I actually did apply still as uh, the company page. But um, I am waiting for LinkedIn to come and say, oh, you can't use it. Well, they haven't yet. So I'm carrying on with it. So what happens uh, when you click on your home button? So I'm on my home page is just 
and cl click write an article. I'm just curious. Oh, right. It? Okay. Write a article. An article. And then does it allow you to put that into, oh, okay. Oh, it is, automatically yeah. goes in to the LinkedIn lady. Okay. See the thing on the top there that, that pushed oh, it? Oh, that's the default, huh? What's the drop down choice? Oh, look at this. How often? Okay. So you can give it a, a name, how often you can post, or how often you want to publish. Can um, I screenshot that? I just want to see. Yes, what absolutely. Okay. I, I want to get, I want to get famous. I've got yeah, some. What's really cool. And Bruce I want Johnston, to get clients from LinkedIn. Bruce Johnston got this early on and has been using it very successfully. What I think is the coolest part of this is that the entire article lands in the e in your regular email and you can read right. the entire article without going into LinkedIn, which I think could be very valuable for mm -hmm. a lot of people for, if their target market's not frequently on LinkedIn. or That also means LinkedIn. that Google should pick it up. They will pick it up, but, but mm. here's the caveat. I've been saying this for a long time. LinkedIn is a rented platform. Yep. And oh, yeah. they change the rules if you have that content that's originating from LinkedIn and then you go to publish it on your website, then it, Google will suppress it as duplicate content. So Correct. even though you'll get the juice in the beginning, I, Correct. it is a rented platform and we know how the rules change. Mm -hmm. when you, need, you, you need to get their emails too. When you yeah. download your database, like when you hey. go in to download your content, can you download your articles? Will it give you the full... I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to jump in on that being a technical SEO guy. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, it's the, the duplicate content issue is blown out of proportion. And all you have to do is see some of the sites that are aggregator sites that have nothing that actually have a huge amount of duplicate content to see that it can't, that it's, that's not an absolute, but wherever you put it first is going to have the most Google juice. Yep. So, but, but, but don't use that as a reason, not as a reason not to do it. You just probably want to publish it on your own site first, even Ooh. if it's by an hour or two. And submit it, maybe submit the URL to search console. Does it suppress however, though? Would it, however, would it if you want to build up followers and stuff like that, then put it on LinkedIn because I know a guy that got, um, a half million views on a LinkedIn article that got picked up by Google. And it just, he, he wound up getting tons and tons of followers just off of that one article. Now that's wow. not so, who just, just crushes it with medium articles, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, the other strategy you can do, and, and again, this is something that Google says, you know, I mean, you'll hear people say this doesn't work, but I know for a fact it does is that you can publish it you can publish it on LinkedIn and then say this article originally appeared here <laughs> and, and backlink to and backlink to <laughs> yep. the one on your own site. Yeah. But don't you yeah. get penalized for the duplicate content? Like no. Same There's no model, penalty. Same There's no penalty. There's no penalty. There is there are there are quality guidelines that if the if the whole site is just like scrape duplicated content, but even that. Even that is questionable because I mean, you take a site like social media today that is just an aggregator. Yeah. I mean, and, and social media today is an aggregator of stuff people publish on their own sites first. Okay. So if the, if the quality is there, if, if the quality is there and is relevant to the audience and it has other good search metrics, there is not an overt penalty for any given piece of content being in multiple places. I mean, there's just, I mean, the syndication is how, I mean, look at how many things there are, look at how many articles there are that are shown on say market watch and Yahoo news, or, you know, they're, they're I mean, market watch is stuff is syndicated in multiple places. I mean, it's, it's actually a very, very common practice. And, and it got, it got, panned a while ago from people who were doing other questionable SEO practices, but syndication of an article and having it published in two places, it does not a, produce a penalty. Okay. All right. That's good to know, Scott, because I, I thought it did. So um, that, yeah, that, that's one of those, that's yeah. one of those things that got kind of bandied about in the, in the SEO world for a while without people quite understanding exactly what was going on. 
So what happens if you have like some content on your blog, on your blog and you want to move some of those articles to LinkedIn? Um, can you publish them all on the same day? Does that look weird or do you have to space them out? So if you take some of that content, you've got some good performing articles and <clears throat> you say, okay, I want to add these now to my LinkedIn profile and I want to put the full content there or at least, you know, most of it. Um, yeah. Does it matter if you do it all at once or does it look really, you know, does not, does not, well, <clears throat> okay, again, there's no penalty for that, but there is a reward for sustained content production. Okay. On LinkedIn. on LinkedIn. On LinkedIn. Well, on, on, on whatever the source is. So yeah, in terms of it being your stuff being on LinkedIn, no, I guess that's probably not going to be as relevant on LinkedIn. Now that wouldn't, that shouldn't matter on LinkedIn because it's not really going to identify like your collection of articles on LinkedIn as a site. I mean, it will know Google is big on tracking authorship now. Yeah. And so if you're, you know, they, 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 they used to formalize it with, uh, they did the whole Google authorship thing a few years ago. And now they just, they figure it out through the various web of interconnectedness but um but there's no there's no like authority to your collection of articles like there is for a domain or a website so on your website it matters to spread it out okay. um because that helps build you know your website as a as a that's something that's getting sort of constant fresh updates but linkedin itself always has fresh content updates so that's not really going to be a factor. That shouldn't really be a factor in your LinkedIn SEO rankings. Okay, good to know. Thanks, Scott. Mm -hmm. It would be it would be prudent for whoever is doing publishing on their website or as a LinkedIn article or newsletter, if it's going to be indexed in a search engine, to pay attention to the views wherever the analytics are available. So, like if you have articles on your website, I would I would recommend. Like if you're going to do a very similar newsletter or LinkedIn article, just take a quick look or a snapshot of your, of that pages, impressions and click throughs and ranking in search console, just in case you have a problem, you'd be able to identify it, you know, like just in case it might be smart. Yeah, so I've got to jump off to a client here, but I wanted to see if you guys are noticing that um, views on content is through the roof this week. The one no. post I put has gone like 27,000 views, the one on the different profile photos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it was just like, I can't believe that. I don't know what it was about that post. Was it views to the root or engagement the as, as well? Oh, both. I'm, I'm oh. So the number is just. Yeah, it's, uh, where the heck is it? Um, yeah, it, it's gone insane. And I was just like, what is it about that post? So, certain posts, you know, they, they just, um, I, I don't understand. I have no, I have no logic. What's your other post doing? I usually get probably about 2,000, 3,000 views on average, um, you know, which correlates with the following that I have. But this one, 27,000, I mean, it was like, uh, where was it? And I did a poll recently that's performed really well. Um, yeah, let me, let me show you this one real quick. Would you like to, here, I can make you co-host if you want to share your screen. Sure, yeah, where did it go? I had a guy get 45,000 views on a poll yesterday. Wow, definitely polls are hot right now. Yeah. Yeah, 24,000 on this one, um, but it's this one. Now, it helped that Anne has, you know, a quarter million followers. She's an influencer, but I basically, um, and she did engage with it, um, but I've gotten 161 reactions and 43 mm. comments. Nice. So, yep. 1,000, yep. you know, and it's like, hmm, that's interesting. So then, you know, the next step is look and see if there's any <laughs> information fine. here. Um, oh, interesting. Yeah. It just, it blows my mind. 1,400 uh, salespeople. Yeah, a lot of salespeople looking at it. And then I did, uh, even this one, I got 2,900 on a um, on a poll. I mean, that seems crazy, you know? Yeah, I've got there, there been times in, and There have been times in LinkedIn where the statistics are just off, where the numbers they, they show are not, yeah. not real numbers. 89 you know? views, okay, so then yeah. there's a, I, <laughs> there's a conflict a there, 24,143. To, you know, then I that go here, 788. Jump. I mean, it's all over the place, 190. Mm -hmm. This one is hysterical. 
and I'm just surprised it didn't do anything. But then there was another one. Look at this, 12,000 on this poll. The, uh, the polls are definitely getting exposure in the feed for sure. And then what was the other one I have here? 166, 280. But there was another one that blew my mind. Um, these are 2,000 on this poll. Yeah. Um, but there was another one. Where the heck is it? Um, I mean, they're across the board. It, it doesn't... I'm thinking I, I probably shouldn't be paying for shield at this point because it doesn't matter. But there was another one. Um, yeah, a lot of these suck. Um, it's the ones that I'm putting originally. Where was the one I want to show you guys? It was another one. Oh, this one. This one. Oh, the lion. I, I remember the lion. That was this a great one, post. Has anyone seen this one? It's hysterical. And I just love it. Where, where the hell did I park my car? But yet this one with this guy, this one, you go on the floor laughing. This one. That was that was really funny. 94 views. Yeah. Why? But this one, I was on the floor. The guy's drunk talking to himself and he's deciding <laughs> on packaging and it's hysterical. So let me give it to the group. You guys can at least uh, look at this and engage with it and tell me if you think it's funny. Uh, but this one, I was I was just laughing. So guys, I'm glad gotta, to hear. Thanks so much. We'll see you next week. See you, Thanks, Monty. Bye. I'll stalk you. Thanks, Bonnie. Yeah. Well, Judy, I'm. I feel much better that I'm having similar weird low counts and then some high counts. So I, it doesn't feel like it's me anymore. <laughs> well, I mean, these these really suck. And I'm using an aggregator for most of those. It's um the polls and then some of these other ones. It's like you know, it's weird. It just, I don't know. Yeah, it makes no rhyme or reason. And it, no, some I, of them are just like, you know, and then I, because I do the, uh, you know, I export it. I go through, uh, was this another one? Yeah, 1,000, anatomy of a URL. Yeah, another one, 2,400. So for a while, I was averaging in that. And then when I have this aggregated content come in through a third party, it sucks. So I'm not going to do that anymore. doesn't make sense. Yeah, cool. You have it. You guys, did you see the referral program in SalesNav now? No. Oh, let me show you this. Uh -oh. This blew my mind. One second. All right, you see this? LinkedIn Sales Nav now has a referral program. They are absolutely pushing Sales Nav. So I hope that means. So what happens when you click on that? Feature like, developments. Are you waiting? This? Are you waiting? Are you waiting? Yes. The suspense is killing me. <laughs> Referrals. Give. Ooh, two free months maybe. well hang on hang on yes so we're going to do this for clients oh you know God. when we onboard someone i'm going to say do this so give two free months of sales nav your connections so you have to be connected first we'll get a free a two-month free trial <clears> and then join with your link prices revert to standard rates after two months and then zero of ten referrals sent and i'm not sure what happens when you get to this magical green flag you get a trophy. You say, I'm, what do I'm, you get? They're not I don't know. You. They, what about, is that learn more? Does it tell you up at the end of the paragraph? Here, we'll, there? we'll go there. Preview message. Referrals will be sent via LinkedIn messages. Hi, recipient's name. That is the worst name I've ever read. I thought you might enjoy LinkedIn Sales Navigator Professional. You can learn more about the about Sales Navigator and join using the link below. You'll get an extended two-month free trial to try out for yourself. Ta-da! So it goes via the inbox. So if you're doing this for your friends or clients or whatever, just know that when you do that, let's do like, since he's right there at the top of my screen. I think, did you apply for this feature or did it just- No, I saw, the... I'm seeing it on everybody. I just noticed it's there today. I, I, I uh, swear I didn't see it until you just mentioned it. Do you, should, we go, should we do this? Do you wanna see what it looks like on the inbox? Yeah. Mike, if I go, if I do this, will you be able to see it? I already have it. Did you just so refer mine? Oh, no, you got it. Okay. I mean, if I go like this. Hey, give it to me. I don't have it. Yeah, yeah I don't okay. have it. Okay, hang on. All right, sure. Go ahead and send it if you like. No, you lost your chance, Mike. <laughs> I, don't know. I already have it. I already have it. So I don't, I don't know. Yeah. What's gonna, it, would, it would be good for me. <laughs> sure. Yeah. That right, somebody doesn't have it. Okay. I don't have the referral. I don't have it. I don't have the referral. There you go. Wait, you're going to use up your whole lot? Oh, geez. You can only send out 10 referrals. What the heck? Ah, <laughs> uh, now we know, though. Now okay. we know. That's what the magical green flag is. It should be a magical red flag. All right, wait, only wait, allowed to say. Yes. Okay, wait, who on. else? I'll, I'll, do, I'll do more. I'll do more. You guys are my people. Who, who else wanted it? Isaac. 
I just, Here, I you know. want to share your screen in a second? I heard, I thought one more person say. So, so is LinkedIn sales navigator worth it? Uh, can you send more than a hundred? Yeah. I mean, it's got some really super filters in it, so it's worth it if you use. That's, that's a longer discussion on if it's worth it because yeah. it's related to what you're doing. Um, on the, the invite limit, I don't know. We haven't seen a correlation on if it matters if you have sales now or not. So no short and sweet answer there. Okay. Uh, Judy or yeah. Bez, did you want to share your screen and show the world what the invite looks I'll for the recipient? Sure. Okay. One moment. You're going to do it, Bez? Uh, no, go ahead. You do it. Oh, okay. All right. Let's see. Where did it go? Uh, I need to make you co-host. Sorry. So the only yeah, thing go. we get for referring people to Sales Navigator is the joy of helping them get Sales Navigator. Well, maybe. Uh, <laughs> well, let's maybe. see. Let's see what happens. So, um, so it, it scraped my first name field. So you you, you can't personalize it. Um, it's got the referral in here. So that's your tracking. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click it. Do, 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 do. Okay. Claim this offer free for two months, accept invitation. So it's going to make me put in the credit card. Let's see. Oh, I'm sure it will. Yeah, thank you. Who the heck is this? Sign in using another account. Oh my gosh. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> okay. So let's see. Today's, ah, they want the payment method. Oh yeah. They're always going to ask for the You're payment free method. It's June. Begins today, it ends June. What are, oh, okay. So I can do, I'll put in a credit card uh, after I get off this. Um, Actually, it looks like it's already saved a credit card in there for you. Oh, it has. Yeah. All right. Sons of a beeswax. Put you, it in your calendar because they are relentless with charging your card before you can say, what? Um, and then if I cancel, maybe then I'll get the two free months. So this could be a sweet deal. Yeah, I was just wondering if you get the two free months or the 50% off, right? Okay, so I'm going to go do it and I'll just make a note to myself. I just want to know how I did this. So I'm going to go ahead and say start the free trial. So let's see what happens. Where's the music? Music. All right, all right, all right, all right. You're all set. Got the free trial. So what happens on your end, um, Isaac? Let's see here. Did you get a, a flag? Yeah, I wonder if she uses it if you get the credit back. Ooh, well, we are about to find out. Okay, one moment. I'm going to share my screen, Judy. Okay, so I'm going to stop share. Okay. Wow. It may, it may even allow me to share it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to refresh this. Joined. Uh -huh. Oh, and I still, it's wow. still stated, it's stated too. too. Oh, All right, that's so what happens in your inbox? Now go to your inbox, see if it gave you any... Uh, You've got both inboxes now. Remember, you got that inbox and then you got the other inbox. Oh, yeah. Nothing. Sorry if your messages just got viewed by the whole world. Nothing. Yeah, oh, there. Oh, and through the sales nav here. Is that sales nav? Okay, so now it's going through sales nav. Interesting. On, on my end. Okay. Interesting. So what stays there, what happens there stays there. Well, it looks like then you get to send out 10 referrals. I did go through this documentation to this page, the FAQs page, and uh, it does not tell me what happens for me when I refer someone. It, it seems just like I'm helping someone else out. There's nothing in it for me. I, I was reading through this while Judy was sharing, and there's there's no benefit for me it also says that it's only available for sales nav pro not team or enterprise wait it's only mm -hmm. available for pro not that's interesting because team is the one right see smart sheets and stuff sales nav referral program is available uh, for sales nav pro users the program isn't available for team or enterprise okay so if you have, is Mike still on? Mm -hmm. Do you, you have team, you have, do you have team? No, Mike? I downgraded. You downgraded. Okay. Professional. I was just going to say, I, I remember you saying in the past you'd have team. So, okay. I did. But All right. For the you can, number of leads. Yeah. You can refer up to 10 per year. Interesting. That is yeah. 10 per year. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. You wasted it on me. No, I'm, I'm going to sign up. Um, 
and well, it, check it out for two months. There's nothing. There's nothing in it for me. <laughs> That's what I said. Other than the joy of giving someone else two free months of Sales Navigator. <laughs> well, what I think I'll do is, if somebody is going to be paying us to help them engage on LinkedIn, yeah. then I might just be uh, saying, you know, like basically, here's one hundred and sixty dollars of. Yeah. you know, off. We'll be selective with which clients I give it to. <laughs> yeah, only the nice ones. <laughs> or the ones that I expect to be around for a while. Yes, <laughs> yes. Or, yes. Or your people. Yes, yes. Well, look at that. It's updated 23 days ago. Do you all want this link here in the chat? I'll put it in there. It looks you. like it's on one of my client accounts now. I'm looking at one. I, I don't have that option. I say we can go and I can go into the help and search for it and find it. Yay. All right, I just put it in the chat in case you want to jump down that rabbit hole. Oh boy. It does say each referral link may only be used once, but it says, uh, Unique to that it person. has something about the link. Each link may be used once, but it also says. And you don't get any glory except you're, you're just a giver. Hmm. Yes. No, thank you at all for helping get LinkedIn more money, you know. <laughs> but it's oh. good than the, the game. So we make sure you put in to cancel that. Oh, so this is, so this is, uh, yes. So it's, it's not quite only 10. It seems more like the first 10. So look at this. It says, if you change your mind about sending your referral to someone, you can take the link from, from that referral link and send it to another person. Now you can't you can't do that within the referral area here. But at the bottom there, it also said that the link was specific to each person that you can't. Right. But it's in your it. inbox. That link yeah. is in your inbox. So what if we did this? Okay, Go Bez. Your, you'll see that link. Let's do this, so Bez. I'm going to hurry up and sign up. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. Hang on. Okay, so there's that. I'm going to put this in the chat. Uh, let's see. Who can I give this to in the chat to see what happens? If not Bez, though. Whoops. Oh, I just saw Bob. I meant to send that to everybody. I sent the, uh... there we go. There's that. And then there's the help in the chat <clears throat> for the documentation. So if somebody does not have sales nav, go there and let me know what you see. I wonder if it'll say Bez took it. Even though Bez I mean, did. don't you don't have to sign up. I, you don't don't worry about signing up. I'm just curious if you can. No, go I, there. I'm I'm going to sign up uh, for two free months. Don't be messing Shoot. with my link, he says. Is there anyone in here that does not have sales nav that can go there and see what happens? I'll go there. Oops, that was the wrong. That was the wrong wrong one. Aha! I guess I can. What? Oh. Give it you to yourself. Isaac, and it's personalized to you, Isaac. Wait, how could you accept it? Aren't you on Nav? Yeah, I mean, so oh my gosh, <laughs> I accept my own invitation. That's weird. You I say, you might as well give it to yourself. Um, you what? Oh my gosh, what? If you Are can the... do this, if you can do wonder this. I wonder what would happen. Could you just let's, refer let's yourself 10 times? I mean, yeah. that's like, yeah. So what happens if you do it? So what I mean, you can't you can't stack two months, three months on accept, top of two Isaac. three months on top of two free months. Well, you can click accept sure you can. have to validate the credit. Well, I don't want to I don't want to mess with Bez here. I'll I'll oh. uh, try that later. <laughs> okay, so we're one minute before the hour's up. Recap. Recap. Pretty much no one has all the cool new features. In this room, when if you receive them, I would be so grateful if you emailed me and said, "Hey, I have this. Can I demo it?" And you can own the meeting. That would be awesome. I got rejected for LinkedIn Live. Yeah, me too. I'm not over it. I'm going to keep submitting. Yeah. You might want to do the same. I'm actually going to try and apply on behalf of my company page. Uh, there's that. Judy Parsons has newsletters and doesn't use it so she's the worst <laughs> just kidding, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, no one most people don't have that um yeah Any, anything else there in the recap oh and then it seems like polls are getting a lot of traction in the newsfeed and then uh content in both impressions and engagement seems to be up this week good to know what about creator 
creator, uh, good to see you, Bez. Creator, it seems like you cannot see it unless you also have it. So we, yeah, good, good, good recap there, good refresher. So like we just viewed a few people who we know have creator, but like if I'm looking at their profile, it looks the same to me. So it seems like you don't get to view it until you have it, which we've seen also in the past with like um, showcasing services. Oh, and then Monty found the individual who had the service page. Did he put the link in the chat at all? He did not. So as soon as I find someone that has service page on their profile, which should be a standalone page, uh, we'll, we'll demo that as well. So if, if you see that, feel free to send it my way and we'll, we'll showcase it. <laughs> 